We, we, we interrupt our program with a special bulletin. It's the first question. Yeah. In your day to day life, do you use violence to solve your personal problems? Uh, no, but I'm prepared, to I'm prepared to react to it through a concealed carry permit holder status. Right, and then we'll go to like the second question. With the exception of self defense, right? Of yourself and others, mm -hmm. would you consider it then wrong and immoral to initiate that force? Uh, to initiate it, yes, that would be wrong and immoral. But and then to defend against it, absolutely, no. that's not yeah. that's not a. Uh, oh yes, yeah. right. no, I understand. Uh, perfect. And then the last question would be: Would you also consider it wrong and moral to violently force your ideas onto other people? Oh fuck yeah! Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the biggest thing I hated during my time in Afghanistan: is the fact that we were trying to tell these people who had been cultivating poppy for hundreds of years, thousands of years, and using it as their main system to support their econo their economic status, which right. was shit to begin with due to the exploitation by warlords of their you know product right yeah, um, yeah. Now we were telling them ideas. change yeah. we were telling them they had to change and that they had to grow something that would be non-pro like you're telling a people that are you know substance farmers growing a very profitable product you know an opiate mm -hmm. um to start growing rice or start growing potatoes start growing things to substance farm at least in support of food right this is a barren environment. Like the poppy barely survives. They couldn't get rice to survive there. Rice takes, you know, a much more, uh, uh, I guess, uh, shit. I can't think of the proper term to describe that environment. A more uh, substantive environment, a healthier environment. Right, right, right. Afghanistan but... is a country that's trying to kill its inhabitants 24-7, let alone grow anything else they're trying to grow there. Right. The real like, drug is problem is, yeah. is here in the United States. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're creating the demand, not... Right. Well, Europe's creating the demand, because most of their opiates go towards Europe. We get most of ours from South America and Southeast Asia. Well, but, they do the same thing down in South America. Yeah, you know, exactly. growing these crops exactly. of uh, coca leaves, like in... Uh, and Bolivia, mm -hmm. uh, grow potatoes. I mean, they've already grown potatoes, you know? <laughs> what yeah, else do you exactly. want to grow? They're already growing these crops. Exactly, and our, our war against those individuals has only increased the violence down there as opposed to decreasing it. Right. I, mean, I can support if they want to get out from under those individuals, those drug lords or warlords, whatever you want to call them. If they want to get out from under that themselves, we can support them with right. weapons and everything, yeah. but then going in there and forcing our own, you know, violence upon it to try right. and stop it that doesn't violence solve anything violence is bad but we're going yeah. to show you through violence violent that was, measures that was the you know that was what initiated the whole narco-terrorism concept with uh freaking uh Paulo Escobar I mean he was like the founder of that he honestly he was the first like narco-terrorist he beat the Taliban to that job <laughs> <He was> like, <laughs> right I don't know and hey, some can say the CIA themselves right yeah exactly um all right, great, great, uh, awesome tangent off the third question. Yes. Uh, all right. <laughs> so now I'm going to go, uh, we're going to go, I'm going to describe very briefly uh, mm -hmm. how government is immoral, and then we can go anywhere after that. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so you just told me in your day today, if you have a plurality then of nonviolent solutions you apply and use to solve your problems. You have this more integrity then against that violence. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, though, we're told, we're taught that the only way we can find any kind of solutions or create any kind of change to any problems here is through government, through politics, through voting. Right. Yeah, see, I despise that. Why right. does Big Brother have to take care of us? Why can't we take care of ourselves? Let's hide behind our corrupt government. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so people vote then with their opinions and preferences and ideas on how best to solve that community problem and yeah. in effect they elect the politician. That politician, his early job is to legislate those ideas and opinions into law. Yeah. And then those laws of opinions are then backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. Yeah. Right? You could take a government example that cannabis is bad for everyone. If I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison. Yep. And if there's any point of refuse to resist because I don't agree with that opinion and try to escape, I'd be met with more violence or sometimes shot. Right? Yeah. And at the same time, governments even found into more violence because no point can say, I do want to help the poor, I do want to help those people overseas, but I don't want to fund war. Yeah. Right? You have no freedom of economic choice. You still have yeah. to give up your property. Yeah. You still have to go. They up your take money. money from you and then they choose where that money goes. Right. You're not personally making the decision. You're giving power to another individual to make decisions for you. Which Absolutely, I, yeah. Which I despise. Yeah, how, how belittling is that? You don't it's, know how best to spend your money and allocate your resources. I'm going to force you and tell you and dictate to you how best I feel, yeah. right? Have, have more authority over you and your own choices, over your own property, right? Uh, so that's that's what government do, right? You know, because if you didn't pay your taxes, they have another nice cage waiting for you. Yeah, right? exactly. So this is how government then is immoral. That this organization called government then only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence. Yeah. Versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions you and yeah. I already shared. And honestly, that's the only way to force really any like opinion or uh, idea onto a people is through the threat of violence. Like, I mean, you can try and 
give them a uh, a uh, positive like uh, reason to pursue it. You know, whether it's like economic benefit or oh, yeah. social benefit. But in reality, there's always going to be somebody who's going to disagree with it, and the only re- the only way to force that person into it is through the threat of violence, or right. the threat of incarceration, or something like that. And yeah. they have to use uh, fancy words to just to hide it, right? If you stole something, I'll call that theft. If I did it and I call myself the government, eh, taxes. Yeah, right? exactly. If you did it, that's murder. Eh, it's organized war, right? Yeah, exactly. If you did it, that's terrorism. Eh, it's collateral damage. Damage. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the list goes on and on. Um, all right, great. So you were mentioning earlier that um, I guess your experience in the military maybe kind of helped see some of this tyranny. Oh, yourself. yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, after two deployments in Afghanistan, I saw through our forcing ideas on other people that I was just a long arm of tyranny. You know, I was diplomacy at the end of a rifle that was, right. in a way, trying to convince them that, hey, look, you should do this and... If you don't, well, we're just going to burn down your poppy crops anyway. And then if you put bombs in the road to try and repel us anyway, we'll, you know, answer that violence with a greater threat of violence because, you know, we got the money and the power and the weapons and the people to do so. Right. So, I mean, no matter how many casualties we may sustain in those situations, we can always inflict more than they ever can. Right. Because this is our nature is a large, powerful, you know, global reaching nation. Yeah, it's like uh, what over nine hundred bases. It's uh, like the rise of uh, the peak of the Roman Empire, mm-hmm. as it were, right? But this is an empire. Now. It's it's imperialism under another name. Yeah, <laughs> it's imperialism under the guise of spreading a democratic value. Bombing or, democracy, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like fucking for Virginia. We're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna free the fuck out of you, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, <laughs> Whether you like it or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that that would that's the that's the greatest distraction, right? To mislead everyone to thinking this overseas where we're losing our freedoms when it's right here at home. Yeah. Right. It's a great distraction to to send people who are courageous and those who who want to defend our home, um, and our community and our families, but yeah. to ship them off elsewhere. We don't Cre- want them here where the problems are really yeah. happening. I'm right. not even like denying it. There isn't any sort of like international threat against our way of life. There is there, but again, they're limited in their ability to it right. to impose it because right. they don't have the resources we have. If this was, I mean, a large nation like uh, Russia or China kind of trying to threaten us, um, they would have a greater like chance of you know imposing violence on us. But they don't want to do that either because that would disrupt the ec- the global economic system that they rely on to support their own nations. You know, right. we buy goods from China. Russia sells all of its fossil fuels and shit to Eastern Europe and or to uh, Western Europe. Um, It'd be more like mutual assured destruction at that point. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's in the the real terrorist organization here that does threaten my property, my life, and that of my friends is is the uh, other uh, I or labeled organization, the IRS, not yes. the ISIS, right? The IRS, <laughs> yeah, the IRS <laughs> creates a greater threat to you, and they have they can impose their will through the right. judicial through the uh, judicial system or through just the. Uh, Department of Justice, DOJ, right. through the DEA or FBI. Or, They'll write themselves for mission. You know, the uh, American AT- ATF. Especially ATF. Yeah, ATFBA. Uh, uh, no, BATFE. Bureau Any of the, yeah, all, all those are, are I find to be terrorist yeah. organizations. Pick so. your alphabet soup agency. Yeah. <laughs> ABC. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Biggest one here. Yeah. Monopoly on distal spirits. Liquor, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, that's, that's great that uh, you, you come to this these areas of, of principles. Um, what do you think about abolishing then this organization? You'd have to convince everyone around, you know, people walking around here that, you know, government, as much as you think it can provide a lot of great things for you, the second it legislates an opinion, it then limits what you can do to that description. Everything outside of that definition is illegal right. under that kind of system. When you leg- people think that legislating something can preserve a freedom, laws have never created freedom. Laws, by their definition, restrict freedom to within that definition that the law describes. That's very true. So how do you think that you can, oh, okay, cool, I will say that, you know, marijuana is okay, oh, but then I've limited it to these strains. If somebody, like, you know, creates a strain that is a different chemical, has a different chemical composition to something else, to the, like, legislated, allowed marijuana right then all right well whatever i'm growing is not allowed uh, it's kind of that it's, you had a very very uh good accurate assessment of that uh, a lot of people think well look what about uh you know they legalized it over there it's like so what that's another distraction right 
over here where if you're caught with it, you'll be thrown into a cage. If they legalize it now, if you don't smoke it within our uh, constraints and regulations, if you don't pay yeah. taxes for it, if you fall outside yeah. of the, the boundaries for that, we'll still throw you into the cage, right? Yeah, it's the same thing as with uh, liquor. Whenever you're, you know, you get yeah. somebody's got a bathroom still or somebody's working a still up in the Shenandoahs, it's because they're not paying taxes to right. the, uh, to the ATF, well, yeah. yeah, to the ATF, to the uh, ABC, anything like that, they are automatically uh, c conducting illegal operations and they can be shut down. Right. So, right. it's that's uh, not freedom. That's, yeah, yeah, prohibition never ended. They just yeah. wrote it differently to make it seem with yeah. the illusion of that, right? Yeah. Um, no, that's, uh, you are mentioning earlier about, uh, um, we're both kind of preaching to the choir. Yeah, yeah, no, this, this is great. No, <laughs> I've never met this guy before. <laughs> yeah, no This is beautiful, man. I'm, I'm, I'm Cal. Kyle. Kyle. Cal. Cal. Yeah, Spencer. Spencer. Pleasure, yeah. man. Yeah, it's I mean, that's what I'm out here trying to do, right? Yeah. Trying to reach out to the community, trying to get eventually a large enough sized community in which we can abolish government altogether. Um, yeah, good luck doing that. Well, it's, yeah, we're on our fourth year. You have a lot year. of people to con convince. Well, you only needed, uh, what, 3% in the Revolutionary War. Uh, you need, I would say here, like good 5 to 10%. Yeah, um, the problem is that 5 to 10% in the Revolutionary War, they were fighting against a, uh, a government that had limited weapon systems. I mean, it was basically equivalent to what the civilian population is able to bring to right. Oh, but we're not we're not talking about oh, uh, yeah, full no, army. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah you'll never yeah, win that. Right. No, they have all no, the weapons, like, they have nukes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. They'd be able to smoke anybody yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> in that manner. But they can't well, stop us from talking to one another. No, right. Yeah, communication and, 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 is one thing that you cannot destroy right. completely. Right. That's that's the only sacred thing that's uh, it still it still breaks down, but uh, but reaching out and having these conversations they can't stop, right? Yeah. And and creating a community that's principled. That has that agrees the real respect for private property of self ownership, yeah. right? It's like let's go in that direction, right? Let's let's ostracize and ignore government to the size when we're finally of, of a good size and strength here. We can yeah. finally abolish it all together, right? My like idea is like what the limit of government should be is something a organization that only enforces the idea of the right to life, freedom, and property. Life, freedom, and property. You have a right to live. You have a right to conduct actions as long as they're not imposed on anyone else's light, right to live or imposed on their property. You do anything that that uh, goes against any of those ideas, that would be illegal. But as long as what you're doing doesn't harm anybody but yourself, get, you, know, you do you, man. What do I, I, I hear you. I hear. Why, do I have any, why should I have any say in what you do as long as it's not affecting anybody else? Right. Yeah. So that would be like minarchism then, uh, as they would call it. Minimal government, right? Yeah. The night watchman. Uh, what do you, have you ever come across any... Um, papers in regards to like those areas of service because that's all the government is they've monopolized services in which you and i don't have the economic freedom to cancel or subscribe or to compete entrepreneurially yeah. right and the same arguments we say like why government should not be involved in this this and this i posit that it should also not be involved in areas of security or law those yeah. are also monopolies uh what do you think uh you ever come across any essays of like the market being able to pr produce the production of security of arbitration um, you'd have to find individuals who are willing to provide their own security. That's the problem is there's such a stigma against things like weapon ownership or right. uh, self-preservation in regards to like, preventing violence, preventing theft, or preventing any sort of uh, violation of your personal rights. Mm -hmm. um, people are like afraid to engage in anything like that. No, they, they are. Feel, Absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, if, if this information has never been presented to them, they would be, right? Yeah. But for this community that we're talking about building here, right, they yeah. will be very well aware of that. They'll be aware that the Constitu that the Supreme Court has ruled in many cases that the police have no obligation to protect your life, liberty, or property, right? Yeah. Many bigger versus East Cheney County, countless of others have upheld that rule. So you're forced to pay for a monopolized service in which they don't provide, yes. right? Uh, and law being another monopolized area of service, arbitration, yeah. Right. Honestly, that, that service of police forces seems to me more of a, not a providing security to you, but providing control of Absolutely, it's absolutely. It's revenue stream. Controlling your actions. Yeah, yeah. it's an extortion stream for them, yes. right? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a way to force you to be obedient, just like when you go into a courtroom and the judge says, kiss the ring. Uh, did you stand up? No. Contempt of court, not in a cage, yeah. right? Uh, in a free society, it would be the other way around. If anyone dared try to present that as a form of arbitration, like, get the hell out of here, I'm going somewhere else, you lose business, yeah. right? You you quickly go down. Yeah. Unless someone wants to have an interesting BDSM kinky relationship with that girlfriend, right? Have a safer. But yeah. not everyone else wants to be under that monopolized arbitration system. Um, so what do you think then, we were talking about limited, uh, that the market could provide all these services then, right? Functions of security, 
right? Protecting. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, shit, I saw it in Afghanistan. That was right. <laughs> most of the guys who were running posts in any of the large bases. They weren't Marines or sailors or soldiers or right. airmen. They were uh, private contractors under corporations like Z, which is the renamed. Which was uh, Blackwater. Yeah. yeah, Blackwater, and then they renamed it again to Academy. That's their right. new name. Or yeah. it was, <laughs> Whenever yeah, there's triple, trouble, we we'll just rename canopy. ourselves, yeah, right? Or, or under Triple Canopy, a lot of those guys worked under that company. They provide. Uh, they just ran the base security. They ran right. all the checkpoints. They ran a lot of the uh, posts. They did all the shifts. It wasn't Marine, and they got paid a shit ton to do it. Right, you know, but your average sailor, soldier, Marine is getting paid like. Twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand dollars a year to do that service, where the dude is sitting on standing on post under a contractor position is getting paid one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year to do that same job. Right. It's, well, I mean that that wasn't though. I would say completely private because they're funded through taxes. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. 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 It's so still, it's it, not pr- completely private. But right. It's still private to a certain degree. It's uh, like I don't privatizing. Know. A well, like, like an example of, of like security. But also, the only people they're allowed to work for right. are the government. That. Those contractors are licensed by the government to work for the government. They cannot work for anybody. They can't just work for any average Joe. You I've can't. heard they've uh, have worked now with Monsanto, though. You ever come across that? I've never heard anything like that. Right. I know like certain uh, uh, armed security corporations provide security for like uh, Bayer and uh, other pharmaceutical companies, and they're growing opiates within like Spain and the Netherlands and mm-hmm. things like that. They uh, provide security for those farms because they don't want you know just a bunch of junkies coming through and cleaning out. Right, the right, right. Um, yeah, but it's they're providing security in a bunch of ways that, as long as it's authorized by the government. By the government, cool. right, right, if, right. You know, if you want to provide your own security like that, now nah, that's not cool. You can't do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They they have they they allow uh, they don't allow competition. Like you find a lot of reasons why mall security cops sometimes are not armed is because you know you have a. Uh, County restrictions, city restrictions, state yeah. restrictions on that stuff. Uh, whereas, yeah. well, like getting, I know in Virginia, I looked at getting a uh, armed security guard permit and like the classes to go through all that. They're they're long, they're expensive, and they're kind of you know they're highly restrictive when it comes to what you can actually uh, attain with it. It's basically right. making it such a pain in the ass to get that licensing that not any you know nobody can just like jump into. I mean, there are people who do it, but. You have to commit to it. You have to right. want it. Yeah. yeah. Those are other taxes, like source and fees, right? Yeah. The, and then finally, I'll give you permission to use your property. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'll give you permission to protect your property. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, no, that, the whole thing is bullshit. The whole thing's a scam. And of course, those licenses go up and up in fees whenever they are, you know, low on funding, right? Yeah. Richmond here is almost nearly a billion dollars in debt now. Yeah, that's uh, that we know of. The yeah. <laughs> figure out how much the numbers that they yeah. put out there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I guess uh, that's that's what we're about. I guess Liberty RBA. Mm. The organization with non-political, trying to do something that has never been done before and trying to go seek real freedom in our lifetime uh, and then an avenue and approach that is consistent with our principles, yeah. right? That, that is uh, to seek the good, right? To to continue living consistent with our virtues with one another, right? Mm-hmm. With real respect for, for each other's, uh, I guess, where we come from, right? Yeah. For our preferences, right? So I guess the way that we see it is when you abolish government here, you have thousands of free societies catering to your lifestyle and preferences. Now you can have different communities with different preferences. You can have your 420 friendly community that doesn't like it, that's great, or one across the street that does, and yeah. you know, but at, there's that boundary area of issue which like, well, you know, we only enforce the rules up to, you know, our private property, right? Yeah. Like, the rules in your room don't extend to my room, <laughs> yeah. right, across yeah. the city, right? Um, but in there, of course, when I visit, yeah, there's respect for private property and the rules that are, yeah. are in place. What I allow is allowed within mine, and what I don't allow is not allowed, and whatever you decide to allow in your space is, I have to respect when I'm there. Right. You know? And that and that'll be consent, right? And now yeah. finally we have a free society really based on consent where there is yeah. there's no consensual relationship. The, with only, the only problem with that is I do agree that there are certain like ideas that I mean, whether they're like racist discrimination ideas or sexual preference discrimination right. ideas or religious discrimination ideas, like you could say that that is like, oh, that's a private decision, he's allowing it, but like sometimes those can bring about you know such violent action it's like how do you control that sort of like idea? that's where you have to like change the cultural the right ideas of, like of that group you have to change like what they view as acceptable or right. trying to like encourage them to feel i mean I, it's kind of hard to uh change like i can definitely say that like through um the civil rights era, one of the big ways that they enforced uh, civil rights acts was through uh, interstate commerce laws. And they would say, like, look, 
you're getting ketchup that's made in Massachusetts and you're having it delivered to Louisiana, you know, well, based on that, you have to follow federal laws that prevent discrimination because you're commi- you're uh, you're participating in interstate commerce, which is a area that's uh, a lot le- that's a uh, a, it's jurisdiction of the federal government. So right. state governments weren't enforcing those ideas because they were made up of the same constituents who wanted to enforce discrimination ideas. Right. Um, so it took a federal power to end that. You know, to and it was under threat of force. It was right. state troop. It was uh, federal uh, law enforcement. It was uh, uh, defense department agencies. A lot of it was through the national guard. Um, they enforce through the threat of violence that you will accept uh, people of other races in your communities, that you will accept, you know, and slowly that has changed the idea, like, just through exposure of, like, hey, look, first you're going to have to deal with this because otherwise we're going to shoot you. Right. And then if uh, them accepting it under that kind of uh, enforcement create just kind of change the culture slowly enough that you do see a greater racial acceptance in the United States. There's still a lot of problems, whether it's... Right. But, I mean, I, I would find, like, they're just, right now at that point, they're just uh, trying to fix the problems that they created themselves, right? I mean, the yeah. state government created segregation. It wasn't businesses. It was state government legislation that says you can't sit in this area of the bus, right? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't the business company. Like they, most of them really don't care what color you are, just the color of your money. Yeah. Uh, it's like, we want our business, right? We want, yeah. we want to prosper. Federal government itself, you know, creating the uh, Fugitive Slave Act, uh, yeah. imprisoning people, right, and and, and and keeping slavery afloat, right. So like, both of them are kind of both to blame. Uh, I mean, so I would say like a government is a government is a government. I guess regards, you know, you have your yeah. your local, state, federal, uh, and at that point, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, weird stuff that happens in between, and and I find it just to be mostly sometimes like gang warfare at that point, yeah. right. Um, and then so like. In a free society, though, so yeah, I would have concern about uh, a community that is uh, exhibits racial hatred or uh, you know hatred towards people with different sexual preference, right? Yeah. But at least that would be contained in that community, right? Yeah, and I can uh, say that most, especially nowadays, most people would avoid those communities. Those communities would see economic failings because people right. wouldn't want to associate with them. Right. They would, gener- they would eventually have to change their ideas to survive economically. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. At the least mar- that's the outcome you would hope for. Right. And that's, that's what I would see. The irrational ones would be out-marketed. And, yeah, they'll, uh, just, they'll just be uh, alienated from the, right. rest of, from the rest of the communities that want to accept everyone. Right. Do you really want to be known as the internet company that also provides internet to this uh, community of uh, bigots? Yeah, right? exactly. It's like, oh, you know, your, your competitors will quickly point that out. Go yeah. with us instead, right? Yeah. Uh, exactly. We're, we're we principled. We have values. Right. Yeah. Right. And then very quickly, like, all right, this is not going to sustain and it. And that would be a market based solution to the problem as opposed to a uh, Point federally guns. enforced, right. yeah, governmentally enforced or legislatively enforced right. solution to the problem. Right. Know. Yeah, no, you got it. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be nice, but it's, uh, wouldn't it wouldn't be nice if we, yeah, exactly. It's all a, right. Part part of me just sees it as like a pipe dream is something that might not ever be possible, but eh, slowly. we got to work towards there. Culture's going to change. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just. For better uh, or for the worse, culture's going to change. Right, it yeah. always changes. Yeah. It always has changed. More and more arguments, arguments help trump uh, a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and if you, they want to have a strictly heterosexual community, great, as long as there's no like exhibiting hatred, you know, or whatnot. Or if you want to separate yourself as a, like a, a nudist colony, you know, as they have. It's like, well, in this community, we don't, we don't like clothes. Like, mm-hmm. great, right? At least you're not forcing that preference onto everyone else, yes. right? Whereas under government, it's, it's a civil war of that, of, of a lot of them realizing that you could use government power to force a preference on me, and then it just becomes a race and trying to hurt each other and club each other yep. with a stick with that. Yep. Um, no, this is beautiful, man. Spencer, right. right? Yep. This is this is beautiful. Cal. Oh, Cal, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking. Yeah, but we're, we're full of a lot of people here in, in Richmond with right. the organizations who are, are trying to create that. I'll definitely grab um, your card. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, check us out. Yeah, um, we do a lot of gatherings. It's uh, our fourth year running. Uh, okay, cool. Over uh, 100 uh, anarchists now, and caps. It's nice. uh, pushing it forward, man. Nice. So you yeah. guys ever work with a group over at, like, Rag and Bones, that co-op? Or, I heard about uh, that uh, place. Yeah, I haven't it's visited yet. It's like a... It's a bike co-op kind of thing. A lot of they hosted a large like uh, anarchist discussion group that was kind of moving around the United States of like global uh, from crime global think people. I think right yeah, yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. I, I didn't actually make it out to the event. I was working that day. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, I don't know, it's another group you guys could look into like 
advertising to or like trying to open up to. I'll have to visit them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that'd be they're in Scott's edition. Scott's yeah, edition. They got it. Yeah, they got a uh, shop over there. Um, so you can find them online. All right. Uh, Ragam, just look up Rag and Bones. Rag and Bones. Spike Co-op Richmond on Google or something like that. You'll find it. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, right. thanks for, for talking. Thanks for sharing, man. This yeah, is really no good problem. stuff. Uh, that's like one out of uh, what, a thousand people here today. That's yeah, you know, like well, right, 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 on, right on everything, yeah, man. I saw your sign. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to talk to this guy. See what he's about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully we'll, we get in touch, um, meet up sometime. Yeah, uh, get to good. know some of the other champion of liberty. Yeah. Uh, I know we were talking like it's that's a lot of people to convince, but now it's got to start somewhere. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, this is our, our way, our foot in the ground. Change. Every individual can be a catalyst to greater change. Right, right. Yeah, getting there. Uh, thank you so much, man. Yeah, this is great. To you. you too, Spencer. Yeah, nice Left behind, dollar signs rule. But what about the fool who falls victim to the material world?